When I first started out, I believed that the instructor had to stand and watch every student from point A to point B complete the whole skill. And I had to do that for every single student, one right after another. It wasn't very effective teaching because I had students who were not actively engaged. They were either kind of sitting there trying to do the skill by themselves or reading books or doing, and it didn't take me long to discover that I was much more effective as an instructor when they were doing the skills and actively helping each other and doing the learning, and I was just making sure that they were doing it right. I found I was a much better instructor, and they were happier with the instruction. One of the things that we're giving you to use in your lab are these recording sheets. And the reason we give them to you to use in your lab is so that when your students get to that state certification exam and they have a measurement skill, they know exactly what they're supposed to or where they're supposed to record that at. You get these off of the headmasterhdmaster.com website under the instructor resources and they even have the little scissor marks on them to show you to cut them up and use them. When the student goes to the state certification exam, one of the things that they do when they're first introduced to the equipment and stuff, they're showing this little pad and they're asked to sign it. That's our way of guaranteeing that that RN test observer has shown the student where they're going to do their recording. You have these available, I just put it in here so that you would know to use it. So that's lab. Now, um, your lab is really to get the individuals ready to work with real life people and residents. And it's a safety issue. They're gonna be coming in from your online instruction and you have not had an opportunity to see if they've really gotten the material down. They might have the concepts down, but they might not know how to apply it. So in the lab, that's when you're really gonna decide, did they get it? Did they understand it? Can they apply it? And then they're going to go into clinicals. Clinicals is for effective supervision of students in the clinical area should foster meaningful learning experiences and ensure safe care for adults or for clients, all your residents. Safety is really what it's all about. And I know that instructors are always worried about the safety part. And are, are my students ready to go into clinicals? I can tell you from experience, and I know that all of you will relate to this too. Even in your other classes, when you've had them for 75 hours of classroom and lab, and you hit that first day of clinicals, they stand there like they have never heard this stuff before. Yeah. <laughs> that deer in the headlight look, right? They all have it. And then you see over the first couple days, the little light bulbs go on as one by one, they're finally getting it, they're applying, and they're taking off on their own. Well, keep in mind that you are going to see that deer in the headlight look during your first day of clinicals. Even after your full three days of lab, and you're feeling pretty confident now that we've, we're taking them into clinicals, keep in mind, they're gonna have that same look. But they will quickly adapt once they start doing familiar procedures and skills. And the key is that you have them do these skills and procedures the same in the clinical setting as what you had them do them in lab and what they learned to do in their didactic part. That's where their comfort zone comes in. I tell instructors all the time, if you are going to team them up with CNAs on the floor for clinicals, you need to keep in mind that your CNAs have a full job to do that day and they're busy. And they're probably not your best instructors for that individual student. Because when the student tries to do the job the way you taught them to do it in the class in the lab, they're gonna say, that's fine and dandy, but that's not how we do it here. And some of the shortcuts that the CNAs have started to take may not be appropriate shortcuts. But if your student is not comfortable enough and confident enough with doing the skill the way that you've taught them, they will gravitate towards those shortcuts. On the other hand, if you can have some understanding with your regular CNAs on the floor, yes, you are going to be assigned to the resident that I have a student assigned to. For those residents where I have assigned my students, what I would like you to do is to observe from afar. And if you see something not being done, come and tell me the instructor 
and I will work with my student to make sure that your care is being provided to that resident appropriately. And if I don't know how to do it, because sometimes, you know what, I'm an RN, and there's some of that personal care I might not have done for a while. You know, there's a lot of different splints. That used to be what used to get me all the time, all those prosthetic devices, and everybody had different straps and different ways of attaching them. And so what I would say to the CNA, today, I would like you to show me and my student how to apply this device on this resident. Tomorrow, I'd like you to stand there while we do it, and the third day we'll be on our own. And at first, my CNAs were a little nervous about doing this, but I can tell you that they come to appreciate the students being on the floor instead of resenting the students being on the floor because they saw them as people who could do something. My students had all those clinical hours to gain confidence in doing the skills the right way and were better able to judge if they were gonna take shortcuts later on. So that just want you to think about that piece as we talk about clinicals. One of the things I definitely don't want clinical instruction to be is the nurse in the white lab coat with the clipboard walking up and down the hallway. That is one of the things that I get the biggest complaints from students on. They expect the clinical instructor to be comfortable enough to help them with the skills, to be stepping in there, hands on, sleeves rolled up, and willing to do the job. You're gonna do the first couple days of clinical, you're gonna be really hands on. You're going to be so physically involved in their training and you're gonna be running. By the end of clinicals, you're gonna kinda of be just going from room to room, kinda of hanging out, making sure things are good, because they're going to have graduated to doing more and more of the care by themselves. How do we assign students for clinicals? This is one way that I would recommend. Day one, each student gets assigned one resident. And when you pick the residents, did you hear me say you pick the residents? I think it's really important that the clinical instructor picks the assignments for the individual students. When you pick their assignment, you're gonna pick somebody for that first day who's fairly dependent for ADLs because they have all day to dote on this one person. And even if this person never gets a bed bath, I have people tell me all the time, we couldn't do bed baths in the clinical setting. Nobody in our facility gets bed baths. Well, you know what? I know there's, there's residents in your facilities who could have a bed bath. You just need to gain their permission or the permission of their family. And um, it actually is a good thing to have that student dote on that one person all day long. So think about all the things that that person, that student can get done on that resident in that one day, if that's all they're doing. Now you want to pick the residents far enough away from each other so that you can grow each student's experience throughout the clinical time. And here's why I'm saying that. Day two, you're going to give that student the same resident they had on day one. Plus, you're going to give them one other new resident. It works really well if it's a roommate to that first resident because what they've done on their first day of clinicals was observe the other regular CNA providing care to the roommate all day long as they provided care to their nice resident in their bed. So day two is not very traumatic for them. They easily can pick up that second resident. Your job during clinicals is not to introduce your students to every resident in that facility. Your job in clinicals is to make sure the students can competently demonstrate the skills. So we're not gonna be moving them all over the place, we're gonna get them comfortable with doing the skills. Never move a student up in the number of residents until they've mastered being able to care for the number you gave them the day before. There is no rule that says all students in a clinical experience are gonna have exactly the same number of residents on the same day. Because one resident is not like another resident. Their needs are not the same. The time they take to provide the care is not the same. So it could be one person's gonna have four and one person's gonna have two, and that's okay. I know um, instructors sometimes get hung up on that. They, they feel like everybody has to have the same number. 